I don't know if I'm the only one out there who feels like this, but I do and I will not be shamed for it. As many of the people across the nation, across the world, we are inside. For the first time in a long time, everyone is inside. Now me, personally, I've been training for this all my life, so I am ready. I've got my books, I've got my tea, I've got my dog. Hi. <laughs> so I am ready for this. So today we're going to talk about one and dones. These are books that aren't part of a series, trilogy, duology. They don't have companions. They are read alone on their own. So starting off, we're going to hit one of my all-time favorites, one that I have read and reread countless times. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This book is a part of a series, so I guess I'm kind of going against my word right off the bat, but honestly, it can be read as a standalone. So this book follows Bilbo Baggins. He's a hobbit. Um, hobbits are kind of like portly, friendly dwarves. All they want to do is stay at home with their books, enjoy the simple things in life. Gandalf the Grey is a wizard and he is going to help 13 dwarves reclaim their ancestral land. Because dwarves are highly suspicious, they don't want to begin this journey until they have a 14th member. Bilbo initially is very much opposed, adamantly opposed to going on this journey, but he ends up being convinced and then the whole book is just journeying. And I loved it when I was a child. I reread it every like four to five years and each time I love it the same. So if you're looking for like a fantasy-esque book, that one is a great start. However, if you're not feeling like old fantasy, old world fantasy, you could try something a little bit more modern and that would be Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hugo. This one I listened to the audiobook of and it was stunning. This book is also very complicated and it does take a little bit to get into. So if you're looking for something that's going to invest some more of your brain power as you're trying to figure out the mystery, that would be a good choice. Now for the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hugo, we wake up in the mind of our main character he can't quite remember how he got there. But what he does know is that Evelyn Hugo is going to die that night. And he has to figure out how. So our main character has seven chances to figure out how Evelyn Hugo died and to prevent it. He ends up replaying the same day, like Groundhog Day, but each day he wakes up in a new body of one of the guests of Evelyn Hugo's family and he has to like work through their various limitations and try and piece together a mystery. And what is gets even more complicated is that every day he wakes up in the new body, but his self from the previous day is still in the body from the neck from the previous day. So it goes around and around and it's very complicated, but it's also very satisfying. It's one of those books, the more you read it, the more you're like, Holy man, this author set up a ton. And it's one of those that I'm really itching to go back into because now that I understand the concept, I really am curious like what I missed the first round because I was just trying to figure out what was happening. That one is great when you're trying to do a modern mystery with a supernatural twist and it's like a very interesting and intricate. Now what if you're like, no, I don't want to use my brain, I am home, I just want to laugh. I got you covered. So, Furiously Happy is a funny book about depression. I know this sounds very odd, but the author, Jenny, she has been depressed for a very long time. And she really does not want to let depression rule her life. So what she decided to do is to become furiously happy. And she talks very candidly about her life. There are taxidermied animals, crazy stories from her past, and it's all around a very enjoyable book while taking a serious look at issues that she has run into throughout her life. So that one is a really great book if you're wanting like a quick, funny read. You don't want to spend time figuring out a plot, you just want to have an experience. What if you want funny, but you don't want real life? I'm glad you asked. 
Where'd You Go, Bernadette is one of my absolute favorite books. It is a hilarious satire look on a very quirky family. Now we follow B, and B is the daughter of Bernadette. Bernadette is a disgraced architect. B was told that if she were to get straight A's this semester, she could ask for anything she wants, so she asked for a trip to Antarctica. And then shortly before they were supposed to go for their trip, Bernadette goes missing. This one I have noticed is a little bit like, some people love it, some people hate it. It's just so over the top with Bernadette's reclaimed architecture and then the incidents with um, B's school. They were just, they had me laughing out loud with hilarity. Also this book, had the audiobook for it, wonderful. The, uh, the narrator, had such a great pacing and such a great comedic timing that it really brought this book to a whole new level. Cannot talk about it enough. It is so good. So what if you want to start revisiting some of the classics? Now, before you all judge me, keep in mind the first time I read this book was in fifth grade and I was a little know-it-all fifth grader and I thought it was the dumbest book I have ever read. I know, I know, I know. I had a hard time grasping why adults, and at the time adults were the end all be all, they knew everything, why they would discriminate. I had a hard time grasping that concept. So when I had to read the, To Kill a Mockingbird the first time, I was just like, this is so dumb. Adults aren't really like this. And I never went back to it because I was just like so angry at this book. I was angry because clearly someone was being discriminated against and it was clearly that that person was not at fault and yet the adults made them at fault. So when I read this back in the day, I just was so mad that I never went back to it. When I hit college, I started to hit like a thing where I just wanted to start rereading some of the books I read in and when I reread it, oh my gosh, it was like I was reading a completely different book. So when I reread this, once I hit college, I've had like over a decade to marinate in the real world, to read other books that have dealt with similar concepts. And this one, stunning, absolutely stunning. Like I, there were moments I teared up. There were moments that made me just as angry as a fifth grade Miranda. Now I know and understand why I was reacting the way I was back then. So this book, it was such a great reread and it was so good. I would highly recommend rereading it, especially if it was something that you read as a kid because when you're a kid, you're limited in what you've experienced and what you can understand. And when you get older, a lot of the times these books will have a completely different perspective on life, really, when you reread these. So I would definitely recommend checking this one out again. You might be saying, Miranda, yeah, that one's a classic, but I want the, the classic classics. Glad you asked. Pride and Prejudice. That one is gorgeous. This one is a classic tale, and once you've read Pride and Prejudice, you can see it almost everywhere in all forms of media. I do actually have a copy, but it's right here. And I'm a little scared that if I were to take it out, everything will come crashing down. Pride and Prejudice follows Elizabeth Bennett, and she is a middle-ish child. So Elizabeth's mom is obsessed with marrying off the girls as quickly as possible. One day, Mr. Bingley it moves into town with his friend, Mr. Darcy. And those are very rich men. Elizabeth meets Darcy and the two of them get off on the wrong foot. He is very prideful and he judges her for the way her mother acts. And she is very prejudiced against him for the way he acts towards her. Now, I do need to like mention that this book's language, it's definitely something that is prevalent from back in the day. And it does take a little bit to get into, to get used to the way people phrase things, the use to the vocabulary it can be a little bit jarring. So this is a book that I tend to read on audiobook because I find myself less tripped up by the words when someone else is reading them to me. 
and I can kind of just listen, relax, and enjoy the story as a whole. It's definitely one of those books that I reread over and over and over and it's so well done that I just cannot put it down. I love it. All right, so picture this. You've read Pride and Prejudice and you know it's like their, their house is way different from your house. Like the things that they have and the things that are essential to running a household back in the day completely different from what we have and yet some things remain the same have you ever thought why why is the house the way it is why do we have bedrooms why do we have living rooms why do we have a kitchen why is salt and pepper on every single table when garlic salt is so much superior in every single way i'm sorry i'm italian it's gotta be said i'm glad you asked because i have a book for you now this book is called At Home. It's by Bill Bryson. Um, a couple of years ago when I first started getting into grad school, I went on a Bill Bryson kick and I have read every book he has written. Except for the human body one. That one just came out. I've got to read that one. But this one is fascinating. So I love books that are like an in-depth look at something like highly specific and answering an insane amount of questions that I never knew I had. and at home, perfect for that, like absolutely perfect. And he went through and he actually researched how houses came to be, like why do we have four walls, why isn't it circular, why are there roofs on the top, how did they come up with an idea of putting doors inside the house and doors to the outside of the house. And then he went room by room by room. And he does such a, an amazing job of really looking in depth to all of these detailed things and I just like, ah, I loved it. It was so cool. And I know like, I don't know if I'm the only one out there who feels like this, but I do and I will not be shamed for it. So if you're curious about why your house is the way your house is, I would highly recommend this book. It is so much fun. All right, so, now that you've learned your entire house means from top to bottom, you might want to start cleaning it up. The life-changing magic of tidying up. There is an adoption of it onto Netflix. There's a manga adoption. There's, I think there might, she might be writing a sequel now, but like it is a standalone. She talks a little bit about like how she's spent a lot of her life trying to keep things neat and tidy. However, she's noticed that whenever she tries to do that, like she'll buy bins to put things in, she'll do this, she'll do that. And evidently, things just start getting messy. When I read Marie's book, I realized that the main takeaway is keep what brings you joy. So you look at something like, does this make me happy to hold it? Is this shirt, this lonely mountain, <laughs> hobbit themed t-shirt, does it bring me joy? when I hold it? And if the answer is yes, you keep it. If the answer is no, you throw it out or donate it. And there's a lot more than just that in the book, but like that's your takeaway. She knows what she's talking about. I use this method to really like tone down my entire house and except for books. The one thing I do disagree with is the books. All right, so the next one we have is a man called Ov. And keep in mind, I fully acknowledge that his name is, is actually pronounced Uva, but like every time I read it, my brain just reads it as Of. This one is like one of those books that just takes you on a journey without like a super hardcore plot to it. And it's done in such a wonderful way that like you're just really taken over by it. So in the book, Of's wife dies. And that happens very early on in the book. And it starts off like very serious where like he doesn't have, he doesn't think he has a reason to live and he decides to kill himself. And I know it sounds very dark. However, there's something about the way he like finds hope and he ends up finding meaning in life slowly but surely. And you're given these wonderful flashbacks of him with his wife and it's truly a beautiful book and it made me really tear up which is not something that I often do a wonderful tale and I'm all about like finding meaning to life once you think it's lost and that book truly was a memorable one and a beautiful one all right so then 
say you're just you don't want something serious you don't want something like a comedic book you just want a book like preferably young adult in that case may I introduce you to the master now this book if you want to get like really technical this is the third in a series however each book for this series can be read as a standalone and it follows a different DC character and it's written by a different author so essentially this one is a standalone book this one follows Catwoman as you can guess from the title and we follow her from her early ages where she ends up getting picked up by a secret organization and then she has to do all these tasks for them in order to save her sister. And then she ends up teaming up with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. And this book was a really fun romp into this world. I've noticed with the DC Icon books, a lot of the trouble I've seen with him is that these stories have been told and they have such famous characters that you know like they end up becoming very predictable. This one felt like an exciting adventure. I loved the tone. I loved the plot to it. It was so well done. That's it for today's recommendations. If you're stuck at home alone, these are some absolutely excellent one and done books to keep you entertained and excited. Thanks so much for watching and happy reading. Bye. So one last thing before I go today, I am excited to announce that I'm going to be starting something new, something outside of YouTube, book club. So the book club call is called As the Plot Thickens and it's co-run by myself and Tucker the Reader and the theme for the book club is really going to be cross genre. It's all about inclusivity and variety. This first month we're going to do a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of, it might be more so young adult fantasy. That will be the first genre that we're doing and the very first book that we chose Conceal, Don't Feel. So this is part of the Twisted Tales series. And it takes classic Disney stories and gives them a little twist. So this one, the twist is, what if Anna and Elsa didn't meet? How would that affect their story? Now, as a full disclosure, I was given this book as a free copy in exchange for an honest review on Goodreads. Choosing this as our pick for the first book club is something extra that we're doing and it's, <laughs> and it's not influenced by the publisher. So I'm very excited about this. So for the book club, what we're going to do is we have a bookstagram and we have a Goodreads. Once a week, we will check in with everyone who's in the club and we'll talk a little bit about wh how we're feeling about the book. At the end of the month, we'll have a larger check-in and it might turn into a live stream. Tucker and I are still working on that. But we're hoping to do a live stream at the very end of the month and discuss the book then. So if you want to join us for this book club, we'd love to have you. Links are down below. Thanks for watching. Happy reading. Have a great day. Bye.